John, it might seem like a strange question given how long you've coached this team and how many big moments you've been through, but I'm wondering what you learned about them in this series. Um, never to doubt them. <laughs> they, uh, we've, we've come such a long way, as you said. I, I've been with this group for a while, and you know, through Steve Eisenman to Julian Brisebois and Jeff Finnick, the leadership's been exceptional, but they've had a vision, and the group, they, they felt could do it, and it's so damn hard to win in this league. Um, but last year, um, the, I just, you just found out we can win in different ways, but in the end, like just the warrior mentality this group had, and it was prevalent tonight. And, um, you know, after a, a really tough loss the other night, um, you, you just can't count them out though. And, and they've just learned how to defend. And, and again, another masterful performance, uh, in the defensive zone to, uh, to win a, a huge game seven for us. Ed and Encina, Tampa Bay times. John, I was wondering if, just to follow up on that, you know, what, what did you think, what was special about the way you guys played in front of Vasilevsky? Well, I don't think we had to play we didn't play too much in our end in those first two periods. And uh, we've talked about it often. If you want to, you know, the best defense is playing offense. And we, we took the risk out of our game. Um, we weren't giving them breaks. We were on top of them. We were making them change first. Uh, and then as the proud team they are and a hell of a team that they are, they pushed in the third. Uh, but I thought, you know, for the most part, we kept them to the outside. I, I, you know, as a coach, you you want to keep playing with the puck, but it's human nature. Uh, they, they we went in defend mode, and and we didn't give up. You know, we gave up some zone time. We didn't give up a ton of chances. Uh, you know, they had a couple looks that maybe a puck rolled off here, but they were uh, they went into warrior mode, and it was uh, it was fun to watch. Dan Rosen, <clears throat> NHL.com. John, you've talked a couple of times in this run about, you know, do you want to be special or do you want to just, you know, win at one time? And tonight it looked like a team that wanted to be special. Did they, you've seen this a lot, but in this situation, coming off a loss, it takes one goal. I mean, did it even surprise you a little bit about the the, the defensive, you know, the attack, all that? I mean, does, does this keep, does this group surprise you at all? Well, not now. <laughs> <laughs> but it took a lot to get here, Dan. Um, the heartbreak in 2015, getting all the way to the final and losing. Um, and then I think 2016, going to same, game seven against Pitt, losing that one. 2018 against this very, very Trotz uh, coaching. Um, you know, he beat us in game seven in, in, in this building. And so um, the, the heartbreak to Columbus in 2019, it was all building blocks to get to here and you can't predict that it's going to happen. Uh, but that's why, you know, the vision of, of everybody in this organization, knowing that we could do this and, and look, we haven't, we haven't won the Stanley cup this year. I mean, we're chasing it just like Montreal is, but to be down to the final two and back to back years, uh, it, it's a pretty re remarkable accomplishment. And, and that's, that's, what we talked about it's, Hey, it's all well and good to one day, you know, put on your gravestone that you want a Stanley Cup, but to be to do it two years in a row, multiple times, you're talking about now your your team is special. And years down the road, they say, well, that Tampa team um, during some time was was a hell of a team, and I think you can really put a stamp on that if if you win another one. Mary Fiello, Tampa Bay Times. John, you've said at multiple points throughout this season that hockey's for the fans. So how much, how special was it just getting to share this moment with them, especially after not having them in the bubble with you all last season? I'm going to tell you right now, I've never heard a building as loud as I did tonight in that last minute of play, ever. It was, the guys, like you you have to tug on guys' jerseys just to tell them if, who was going out. It was, uh, I thought when Gordo scored, it was loud, but that last minute, it was electric. And uh, yeah, the fans uh, fans came to play tonight as, as just as our team did. Eric Erlinson, Lightning Insider. You mentioned the 2018 game against Washington. That was Vasilevsky's first series as a starter. 
And the, the growth in him from that game seven to what you've seen develop over the last two years, I mean, that's four straight series clinching shutouts for him. Just the maturation and, and kind of what he's grown in these past three years to get, get, get you to this point. Well, I've said this many times. Hockey's a team sport, and it takes everybody to put in the performances that have gone in, especially the defensive ones. Um, it's what makes the playoffs special. But in the end, you need the goalie to make the stops at, at times when everything else breaks down. And, and Vasi is showing time and time again that he can do that. And to elevate your game and have the mental fortitude to grind through like series clinching, potential season ending games and rise to the occasion. Again, we're throwing the round, around the word special, Vasi special. John Romano, Tampa Bay Times. Hey, John, you've talked about the journey that this group has been on a few times. Could you, I mean, just how much pride do you have in this group that in 2019 was scoring four goals a game, was sort of this high-flying offensive team, and has evolved into a team that can win one nothing in game seven? Well, I think it's it's uh, becoming a broken record, but I, I tell you, it's it's not how many you put in the net, it's it's what you keep out. And it's a hard lesson to learn, especially coming like the players that are coming up today and the skill and, and the rules that get put into place to open up skill and to skate and to score. But when you get to the playoffs, it's about defending. And uh, the games, like, I don't know, watching that game, that was a damn exciting hockey game. It was one nothing. And yeah, are, are the six fivers? Are they fun to watch? Uh, great regular seasons, you know, games. Um, those happen, but in the playoffs, uh, you got to be able to defend. And and we've had them. I mean, our first game with Florida was, I think, it's still regarded as one of the best games of the year. But you're not going to end up winning a championship doing that. And uh, you have to have a team that can win it both ways. But in the end, you have to be able to defend. And we've been doing that in the last. Uh, last couple of years this team joe smith the athletic john you mentioned guys getting kind of warrior mode there and Nikita kucherov said there was no doubt in his mind he was going to play tonight i was wondering if there's ever, ever a doubt in your mind he was going to play the last 30 so hours and kind of when did you, what did you think of yeah I, I i didn't feel the same way i'm glad he did and that's all that's the only vote that counts uh but it was uh it was dicey and and i i thought that was a big push for our room because I I'm not so sure the players thought he was going to end up playing um, especially after after the game a couple nights ago but not only to get Cooch back um, but to get Journey back I thought that was a huge lift for us and, and, and clearly uh, it was a, it was good mojo for our guys we have time for two more Brian Compton NHL.com John what can you say about the Islanders and how much more difficult was it to eliminate them this time around thank you you, when you win a championship or get to, I shouldn't say win because we haven't won, but when you get to end up playing for a championship and hopefully eventually win, you want to say you went through the best. And I can honestly say here, like the Islanders, I mean, they're as good a team as we've played in two years. And last year, in game five, you know, they beat us in overtime. Game six goes to overtime. You know, Tony scores that goal, but all of a sudden now you're you're flirting with a game seven. And this one here, we lose game one. So now we've got to, you know, beat them four out of six. Uh, and nothing was easy. Not even the, the eight nothing game. Like that didn't come easy. And things just went our way. And and then you have to go into their building and and grind out a game and it was uh, unbelievably difficult. And the proud team they are to come and push on us as they did at the end, um, that's as close as two teams can be. And when you go to game seven, you need a all-world play by Ryan McDonough. It's, it's too bad he doesn't get, there's no third assist because he definitely deserved it on that goal. And just to have the patience the way those guys do and, and to score shorthand and go win it, it's crazy. But it's uh, it, 
they're so damn tough, so well coached, and they play so hard. It was uh, an extremely, extremely difficult series to get through. Last question, J.F. Chamont, Journal de Montreal. Hi, John. It's still a strange year, but in the final, you're going to be facing a team from your own division, normally, the Canadians. But can you imagine how special would it be for your GM, Julien Brisebois, who's coming from Quebec, and he start in the NHL with, with the Avs? Yeah, that I, I think I haven't talked to him about this yet, but I'm sure he is uh, probably a little giddy about having the ability to, A, um, you know, it, more, more importantly, go to a final, but to, to play Montreal, I, I, he's, um, he's a proud, proud French Canadian. Uh, he loved working for the organization. There's so many things when we first started here that he brought over there and taught me about how things are run in Montreal, the class organization that they are. I've loved coaching there. It's, uh, you know, on the road, it's, it's my favorite building to be in. It's, it's a phenomenal environment. And because of the rich history that's gone on there, I, I think for for Julian, I, it'll be a really exciting time for him. Uh, but for us, they're a roadblock, and um, we're we're a determined group to go in there and and see another team that we haven't played. But it's clear by watching them on on TV how good they are and how they've got their mojo going and and led by their goaltender, and it's. Uh, I think it sets up for it's going to be a fun series and um i'm you know i don't know what this is going to go on with fans i i hope they let more fans in there the fans of quebec deserve um they haven't been back since 93 they deserve to watch their team play i i, I hope they get in there um because as you saw tonight having fans in the building is a sick environment and uh, this game was meant to be played in front of fans and uh hopefully they get to thank you coach that concludes the lightning media availability Thank <laughs> you.